Okay, we are live. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, let's go to Psalm 135. Um, here, the Bible talks about the, the gods of the heathens that are uh, mm -hmm. powerless. And I love this verse because this is uh, what I was. I used to worship. As a Muslim, I was worshiping a God that was the object of our own imagination, the object of our own hands. And uh, it was a heathen God. It was a God that was dead. Yes, so uh, verse... Um, 15 says, the idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouth, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear, nor is there any breath in their mouth. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. Blessed, blessed the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord out of Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then uh, Jeremiah, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10. Uh, so the difference between the, the God that we worship and the God of the heathens is that our God is alive. And he conquered grave and death and sin and Satan. And uh, we can trust Him and, and, and worship Him. So verse 3 says, For the Gentiles are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with, an, with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten, they fasten it with nails and hammers, so that it will not topple. They are upright, like a, plant, like a palm tree, and they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. Amen. So basically the Bible talks about the God of the heathens, that they have gold and silver, they have no power, they have no breath in their mouth, and those who make them are like them. So when I was a Muslim, the God that I was worshiping was a dead God. I mean, we used to pray five times a day, fasting a month, going to the mosque and doing all kinds of rituals in order to please Allah to go to heaven. And we had never heard the gospel that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died for us on the cross and He rose from the dead. Uh, but when I heard the gospel and opened my heart and received the Lord, my life changed. Because the God of the Bible is a living God, a God who rose from the dead, who became like His creation, who died on the cross. And one of the things that is very important for us to understand as Christians is that when Jesus died on the cross, uh, his pain, his suffering was not physical only. Uh, that's one of the things people have a hard time understanding or believing. When Jesus died on the cross, he died both physically and spiritually. So he could not be killed had he not been uh, dead spiritually on the cross. That's why he cried out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because the Father and the Holy Spirit left him. Do you know why? Because he became sin. The Bible says, He who knew no sin became sin in us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So meaning that Jesus became a you and I when we didn't know Him and we were not believers. Jesus became like Adam and Eve in the garden after they ate the fruit and they became sinners and they died. And they hid themselves, remember? And they were afraid. Jesus became like that. That's why on the cross He cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He died spiritually on the cross. So the pain that Jesus went through wasn't physical only. It wasn't just the spikes in His hand or His feet. It wasn't just a thorn on His head. The pain that Jesus went through and it began in the Garden of Gethsemane when He knew that He's, he's supposed to become an offering for sin. When He knew He's going to be separated from the Father. He's, he's going to become sin. And that's why He's a sweat. When they arrested Him and tortured Him, <clears throat> And uh, when they took him and uh, crucified him, his pain was far beyond what we can imagine. The pain that Jesus went through was emotional, was a spiritual, to the lowest part of the pit, the lowest pit in Hades, which is called Tartarus. Remember in Luke 16, the Bible talks about the story of the Lazarus and the rich man. So when, the Lazarus, uh, when Lazarus and the rich man died, uh, the rich man opened his uh, eyes and he, he was in torment. And then he saw uh, Lazarus to there because there is a gulf fixed among, in between us, right? Jesus went into that gulf fixed in the lowest part of Hades and he was tortured there by principalities and powers and dominions of darkness. Jesus was tortured for you and I. And did you know that in a spiritual world there is no time? 
So it's not like a 24 hour limit in a spiritual time. But in a spiritual realm, there's no time. That's why people have a dream and in the dream, you can see a long dream. Like when you're a child, you grow up, you go to school and so many things happen only in the, in the matter of a couple hours, naturally. So in the Bible, in the Old Testament is pointing out to Jesus. So in Psalm 88 is actually describing his spiritual death. And uh, Jesus suffered for you spiritually. Because see, when, when the Bible says God made his soul an offering for sin, that means he made his whole being an offering. Not just physical body, but his soul and his spirit. So Jesus, um, as a person, because you as a person, if you are a sinner and you need to be saved and forgiven, that means that you need to be, uh, and somebody is going to become your offering, that means his spirit, soul, and body must must suffer for you. So Psalm 88, this is the, the psalmist is explaining and, and the Spirit of Christ is speaking through him about the future. Just like David in Psalm 22, he says, they, they pierce my hands and my feet, they cast lot for my garment, right? Um, so Jesus, uh, David didn't die uh, on crucifixion, but he's prophesying the same thing here. It says, so now this is Jesus is speaking. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried out to you day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to the grave. I am counted with those who go down to the pit. I am like a man who has no strength, adrift among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, and who are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in depth, your wrath lies heavy upon me. You have, uh, uh, and you have afflicted me with all your waves. You have put away my acquaintances far from me. You have made me an abomination to them. I am shut up and I cannot get out. My eyes waste away because of, a, because of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon you. I have stretched out my hands to you. Will you work wonders for the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise you? Shall your loving kindness be declared in the grave, or your faithfulness in the place of destruction? Shall your wonders be known in the dark, and your loving your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But you, I have cried. But to you, I have cried out, O Lord. And in the morning, my prayer comes before you, Lord. Why do you cast off my soul? Why do you hide your face from me? I have. Uh, I have been afflicted and ready to die from my youth. I suffer your terrors. I am a distraught, and your fierce wrath has gone over me. Your terrors have cut me off. They came around me all day long, like water. They engulfed me altogether. Loved one and friends you have put far from me, and my acquaintances into darkness. So when Jesus died, his soul and his spirit went to that lowest pit, and he was tortured there until the demand of justice was served, until the, the punishment for your sins and my sins were paid. And that's when God declared him righteous. And Jesus was the first person who got born again. Amen? Amen. That's why the Bible says he's the firstborn of the new creation. He's, for, he's, he's the first fruit from the dead. Now, is that true physically? Because physically, when Jesus, um, if he's physically speaking, then he's not the first person who rose from the dead. I mean, Lazarus, came back to life, right? He had raised Lazarus from the dead. That widow's son came back to life. Uh, Jairus' daughter came back to life. Elisha and Elijah raised people from the dead, right? So why the Bible called him the firstborn from the dead? Because he was the first person who got born again when he died spiritually. Amen? So that was the price that he paid for you. But my, my point is that we're going to talk about the resurrection power. But the, the same power, the same power who went down to that pit, and pushed all the, those darkness away and raised Jesus from the dead and, and gave him a new birth or, 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 or he got born again in that place and then put him into, back into his body and healed up his body because his body was wounded, right? And healed up his body and then raised him up and went to heaven and then he pleaded his blood on the mercy seat in heaven. The Bible says the same power is available to you to put you over and to give you victory over all the darkness that is surrounding you. Amen? Amen? So basically, you can say this way. The same measure of the power that raised Jesus in the lowest pit and gave him new birth and put him in the heavenly places, the same power is also available to you. Remember when he rose from the dead? When Mary came and, at the garden and then Mary was there and then the tomb was empty and she was crying and the Lord appeared to her. And then he said, Mary, why are you crying? 
And then she turned and saw the Lord. And she began to say, Rabuni, Rabuni. And she began to, she wanted to touch Jesus. But the Lord said, don't touch me. Do you know why? Because according to the Old Testament, the high priest could not be touched before going to the holies of holies. So Jesus said, I have not gone to my father yet. I have not gone to my God yet. So J Jesus ascended that day into heaven. He, he put his blood on the mercy seat, just like the uh, the uh, just like the, uh, the high priest in the Old Testament going to the holies of holies and spilled the blood seven times on the mercy seat. Jesus put his own blood on the mercy seat seven times to atone for our sins. And, and the Father approved it. That's why when the in the Old Testament, when the high priest would come out of the holies of holies, they would blow the trumpet that the sacrifice was accepted. But in Hebrew it says, he once forever, once for all, he entered the heavenly tabernacle, not made with hands, and he played his he played his own blood, his own blood on the mercy seat. And then that's why when he came back, he told Thomas, come and touch me. He told Mary, don't touch me. Then he said, touch me. That's why in between, Jesus went to heaven and he gave his blood. And that's why the, the sacrifice was accepted. And then he came back. And then when he came back, uh, for 40 days, he showed himself to disciples. But the thing is that the power of resurrection, that's what we're going to talk about. The power of resurrection. Yeah. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1. I mean, there's so much to, to know. And that's why Paul says, you know, uh, anything that I, have I might have confidence in, in the flesh, I count as rubbish, mm -hmm. that I may know him and the power of his Resurrection. Anything that that I that I might have confidence in. So let's go to Ephesians chapter one, and we're gonna read from verse fifteen. Now this is the prayer that I prayed for you in the beginning. Prayed for us. So it says, therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe, according to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand uh, in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in ages to come, but in that which uh, also to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is the, his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So the Bible says this basically. Here is saying that I pray that you may know by revelation what is that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that the same power works in you and, and to put you over above all principality, all power, all dominion and might. The same power is available for you to put you over. Amen? So basically it is as if I say, okay, this car that I have, it has the same thrust power or some horsepower that the Boeing 747 has. So, right? <laughs> is that a good example? It, it, it is as if I say, this car has the same power as this airplane. So, the power that is backing you up right now is the same power that went down to the pit, pushed all the darkness away, and raised Jesus from the dead, put him back into his body, healed up his body, and took him to heaven, at the right hand of the Father, far above all principality, power, dominion, and might, and above all names that are named. This is the power of resurrection. Amen? Amen? You know, without resurrection, the cross wouldn't be anything but a defeat. What validated the cross was the resurrection. Without the resurrection, what happened on the cross would have been a defeat. That Jesus died and he got defeated. So resurrection turned the cross to a victory. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Resurrection turned the suffering of Jesus into a blessing. Resurrection turned the, and the, the death on the cross into life. That's what the power of resurrection is. Without it, if, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, Christianity would have been just like any other religion. It has a bunch of good words, nice words, just love people, love one another, and that's it. Just like, you know, Buddhism or just like, you know, uh, like Zoroastrianism. 
just have some good words. Without the resurrection, Christianity would have been just like any other religion. What the difference that makes a difference is that Jesus rose from the dead. Oh, Amen? Yeah. Sure. You know, Billy Graham, sure. uh, he went to uh, Germany after World War II, and he met with the uh, post-World War II German chancellor. His name was uh, Kenneth Adenauer. And um, I think uh, Jack remembers him. Conrad Adenauer. Yeah, Conrad Adenauer. <laughs> and then what happened was, uh, so Billy Graham was a young man, and he was talking to um, Adenauer, and, and, he, and Adenauer asked Billy Graham, do you really believe that Jesus rose from the dead? So Billy Graham said, sir, uh, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, I wouldn't have a gospel to preach. And, uh, and he said, Mr. Adenauer walked and toward a window, looked outside, and then he turned back to me and said, Mr. Billy Graham, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, I see no any other hope for humanity. This is the power, because meaning that if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, there's no hope for humanity. The only hope we have is in the gospel Amen. that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen? Amen. Does anybody here know what the gospel is? I'm sure you should do. No, right? <laughs> what is the gospel? Jesus died, was buried, and rose, rose from, the from the dead. Amen. Amen. So, you know, I've been, I've been to so many churches, and, and God is my witness. I've asked people, what is the gospel? And 90, 95% of the people don't know what the gospel is. They say, oh, is Jesus, um, God loves you? Uh, like, the gospel is that Jesus is God who came into human flesh, who lived a sinless life, and he was crucified for our sins, and he was buried, went to hell, was punished, and he rose from the dead. And he's the only way of salvation, and he's to come back soon. So this is the gospel. If anybody denies one of these, one is, one of these aspects, he's not a Christian. That's why, so this is the gospel, the good news, the, the word gospel comes from the word evangelion in, in Greek. It means the reward for the good news, but later on became the good news. So meaning that the good news is that when Mary went to the tomb and saw the tomb empty and the Lord appeared to her, she came and she brought evangelion. She brought the good news, told the disciples, the Lord is risen. And that was the gospel, that the Lord is risen. Amen? Sure. And that is the message of the gospel, that is the power of resurrection that Jesus defeated death and sin and he rose from the dead amen, amen. and do you know the Bible says you're sitting with him in heavenly places amen. at the right hand of the Father amen. amen so Paul says I pray that you may know who you are as a result of this resurrection power that works in you everything every time you pray for something and you get an answer every time you have a victory over a situation that's the resurrection power of Christ working in you and through you amen Yes. Without resurrection yes. power, right. there wouldn't be any victory. Amen? Yeah. That's why uh, this is the New Testament. This is the gospel. This changed the history of humankind. So let's go to uh, the book of Philippians now. Book of Philippians, chapter 3. Now again, here Paul is talking about all his uh, credentials. And he's, he's saying, hey, if I want to boast in my, boast according to the flesh, I can. I can boast that I'm an Israelite. I was born on the... I was uh, born in the tribe of Benjamin. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm a, I was a Pharisee concerning religion. And I was a zealot, a zealous man persecuting the church. But then he says, none of these things I care about. See verse 4. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else uh, thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, Concerning the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what, what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. So he says, I count him as dung, different translation says. And he says, I, I, yeah, and he says, I, I don't care. Basically he's saying, I don't care where I'm from, what color I have, what degree I have, how educated I am, how much money I have. All I care is to know who I am in Christ. Yeah. Then he says, that I be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God, by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and uh, being conformed to his death. So basically it's saying that, that, I may, that I may know him and the power 
of his resurrection. So basically, Paul says that I may be found in him, meaning that I might find my identity in him as a new person. That as a result of my faith in Jesus, as a result of this blood covenant I have with him, that as a result of this relationship with Jesus and this resurrection power that works in me, who I have become in Christ. That I may be found in him. That's why in Galatians 4.19 he says, Little children for whom I, I, I suffered the, 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 the pain of birth, that, that Christ may be formed in you. So he's saying that, that basically what he's saying is that, that you know nothing else, nothing about circumcision and Sabbath and this and that, that all you know is who you are in Christ as a new creation. Yes. Amen? Father. So your new identity, because of what Christ did for you, who you are in Christ. Amen? Amen. Let me ask you a question. Who are you? Amen. You're a new creation in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You're a new creation in Christ. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, and here he's talking about when Jesus uh, basically, um, verse 14, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. When did he do that? When Jesus was he raised from the dead, he defeated the, the principality, power, and dominion. He defeated the very Satan that had the keys of death and Hades. And he took the keys from him and he whipped them. Jesus whipped the devil. And he took the keys back from him. And he put his feet on his neck. That's what in the book of Joshua says. He put his feet on his neck and crushed his head and took the keys from him. The same power is in you. Amen. The same power is in you. That's what Jesus did to the, to the devil. You know, the Bible says uh, that uh, a strong man, if he comes to uh, basically to take, a, take over a house, he has to first bind the person and then plunder him. So Jesus had to bind the devil and then plunder him, take the keys. And, uh, and then when Jesus went to heaven, pleaded his blood, and the work of redemption was accepted, then he came back. And went down uh, before ascending to heaven. He came back and took those souls who were in, in, in paradise, the Old Testament saints. And he took him into heaven. That's why the Bible says a cloud surrounded Jesus. The cloud is always referring to the cloud of witnesses. Hebrews chapter 12. And those Old Testament saints who were in paradise, whom that rich man saw across from that gulf, he took him all free and took him to heaven. Amen? You know why? Because nobody could go to heaven in Old Testament. When they died, they went to a place called Paradise. It's a part of the Hades. And they were kept there temporarily until Jesus basically came and finished the work. And then he took it. Abraham was there. Moses was there. Joseph was there. Jacob was there. Isaac was there. Lazarus was there. He took all the Old Testament saints and took him to heaven. Amen? So because of his resurrection power. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's go to Colossians 1 and verse 15. And this is where it's, it's talking about uh, when, when Jesus, um, he's, the, he's, the first, he's the image of the invisible God. Verse 15, Colossians 1.15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. See? So basically what God did, that all creation, Adam's creation, it was corrupted, right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus came and he died on the cross to basically nullify the Old Testament covenant, mm -hmm. the Old Covenant. Because the, the only way to get out of a covenant is to die. So Jesus had to die. You know, he's the same person who made a covenant with Moses. Mm -hmm. Jesus made the, the covenant in the Old Testament with Moses. He's Yahweh. Yes. So he came and died the death to nullify the first covenant. And then he established a new covenant. So God made a new creation in Christ. And the Bible says he's the firstborn of the of the new creation. Mm -hmm. He's the first person who got born again in the new creation. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you and I are born again in the same manner. So you, uh, that's why in 1 Corinthians 15 it says, you know, the first, the, the, the corruptible and then the incorruptible. The Bible talks about the first, the, the, the seed germinates and then the, uh, the later the things come out. So first you have to be born again and then your body. Jesus got born again and then the rest came after afterward. So that's why the power of resurrection of Jesus, 
It's so amazing. That's why the apostles, all they preach in the book of Acts, all that they preach was the resurrection power. Christ whom you crucified, God raised him from the dead and, and we are his witnesses. Hallelujah. That's all they preached. Hallelujah. They didn't have theology. They didn't have doctrines. All they preached was Christ died and he rose from Hallelujah. the dead. Amen. And one time I just began to highlight all the verses that talks about resurrection. And it was amazing yeah. from the book of Acts from the beginning to the end. I saw so many verses yes. that talks about resurrection from the dead, that He raised from the dead, that God raised Him from the dead, That's and He put Him over. He made Him the Prince of Life. Amen? So let's go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 4. Aren't you glad you're in Christ? Yes. You know, uh, Pope John, uh, 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 John Paul II said this. He said, do not be this in despair. We are Easter people. And hallelujah is our song. <laughs> I, mean, I think he was the only good Pope that I know. <laughs> but he said, don't be in despair. We are Easter people. And hallelujah is our song. Amen. So whatever you're going through right now, whatever suffering, lack, whatever problem you are facing right now, know that the resurrection is coming. That the third day is coming. The resurrection power is available to put you over, to give you victory. And to put you over all your, your problems. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And here he's talking about Abraham. How he did not look at his own body being already dead. And um, he's talking about how God raised the In the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead. And called those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope in hope believed. So that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken. So shall your descendant be. And not being weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead. Since he was about a hundred years old. And, uh, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. So basically this, in the same manner he's saying. Don't look at your flaws. Your mistakes. Your problems. Because See, Abraham did not look at his problem, he looked at the promise. Mm -hmm. And the promise of righteousness, that today you are righteous in Christ. Mm -hmm. So don't look at, oh, I did this, I make this mistake, so I'm a bad person. God hates me, he doesn't love me. No, walk by faith, right? Amen. He did not, not being weak in faith, mm -hmm. he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. And being fully convinced that what he had promised he was able to, to perform. And then it says, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, it was not accounted, it, doesn't, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. See? Who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification see now you can forgive someone for example let's say you have stolen something from me and I forgive you right if I forgive you that doesn't mean you still are a thief if if you murder someone and they forgive you you still are a murderer right but see when Jesus not only forgave us he also justified us mm -hmm. meaning that not only he forgave you he gave you a position Hallelujah. imagine like let's say somebody steals from me I, I, I catch him I forgive him and also I turn him to become a different person and give him a position at my company. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That's what Jesus did to you and I. He not only forgave us, he also gave us a position as sons. He adopted us. He gave us, he gave us his own heir. And that's the power, again, of resurrection. He raised him up for our justification. So you're not a sinner saved by grace. That's right. Come on, you're a child of God. Yes. Amen? Yes. You're heir of God in Christ. Yes. Join heir with Jesus Christ. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yes. That's who you are. Amen? Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Religion is always beggarly and poor and busted, disgusted. Uh, but Christ, I mean, hallelujah. When you walk, you walk and people see the life of God in you, victory. You speak the resurrection power of God, even though you're facing apparent defeat. But you hold on to that confession, and sooner or later, the, the, the resurrection power of Christ is going to turn everything around. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hold on to your confession. Hold on to your new identity. No matter what you face today, God's power is available to give you victory Amen. over all things that you're facing. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. That's the resurrection power. So Romans chapter 
And then it goes on, it says, and he raised him up for our justification. He delivered, was delivered because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification, just as you've never sinned. Mm -hmm. So he justified you. Not only he justified you, he what? He glorified you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Not only justified you, those whom he, he justified, he also glorified. Yes. He, he gave you glory. He gave you a position. He gave you a crown. He gave you, he, he, he robed you with his, uh, he put a robe of righteousness around you. He put a sandal of authority, a ring of power over your hands. Remember that the prodigal son came back? His father put a robe on him and a ring and a sandal. They all mean something. So that's what Jesus did to you. Not only forgave you, he but also gave you a ring and a robe and a sandal. He gave you authority and position and power. That's who you are as a new creation in Christ yes. Jesus. And do you, many people don't know who they are in Christ? Let's go to Romans 1. And Romans chapter 1. I'm telling you, we, we never had these things in Islam. I mean, whenever the Muslim, we just would go cry and weep and weep and weep, hopefully, wishfully, to get something from Allah. Not even once Allah answered our prayer. Not even once. But the day I call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah, <laughs> His resurrection power was right there. The same power who raised Him from the dead rose me from the dead. And gave me life, right? Amen. So, uh, Romans chapter 1. And um, it's talking about Jesus again. And it says, uh, verse 3. Concerning His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh. So, naturally speaking, He was born in the David's family. He was not David's son. He was born in, da in David's house. Because uh, He was uh, da David's Lord, not David's son. Now, they call him David's son because he was born in that house. That's why. Mm -hmm. And declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Mm -hmm. So basically what he's saying is that by God raising him from the dead, he proved that he is the son of God. He is who he said he was. Mm -hmm. You know, people argue on different aspects in the Bible, like this apologetics, you know, people talk about whether Christianity is true or not. Mm -hmm. You know, there's one thing. And if that one thing is true, then everything else is true. Whether Jesus rose from the dead or not. Right. If he can prove that, then everything, it settles everything. Then yeah. everything else is true. Right. Everything else is true in the Bible if Jesus rose from the dead. Right. Even if God said there is like a, um, a white uh, draft or whatever. White so white elephant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever God says, if, if resurrection is true, whatever else God says is true. The healing power is the, the promise on healing, the promise on blessing, the promise on salvation. Everything else is true if indeed Christ is risen from the dead. Amen? That's why the resurrection power. It says that He proved and declared to be the Son of God with the power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And then it says He, gave, he raised Jesus from the dead and He proved to be the Son of God. Basically, Jesus proved everything He said by rising from the dead. <coughs> He proved it by rising from the dead. Amen. Amen? And that's why Christianity is not a religion. It's not a tradition. That's right. It's a relationship with God. And it is the resurrection power of God that our Lord is risen. And we are alive in Him. In Him we live, we move, we have our being. Yes, Amen. That's right. And that's what God did for Jesus. That's what God did for us, for you and I. When He raised you and I from the dead, He glorified you. Those Him who justified you also glorified. God glorified you. Mm -hmm. He gave you a crown. He's not ashamed of you. Do you know what is your identity? Let's go to uh, Ephesians 1. In Ephesians 1, it's talking about your identity. Who you really are in Christ. Do you know where does your identity come from? Your identity comes from the resurrection power of Jesus. When He rose from the dead, basically God made a new creation. And that's who you are. So if they ask you who you are, don't say, I'm so and so from from Japan, <laughs> say, I'm a child of God in Christ. You have to, you really have to get down in, inside of you so deep that when people ask you who you are, before even you say your ethnicity or your background, you would say, I am a child of God, Amen. right? Amen. That you are so acquainted with your identity that before even you say anything else naturally about your identity, you say, I am. <laughs> don't, don't say that in DMV. <laughs> One time I asked them where they're from, they said, I'm from heaven. <laughs> so let's go to the book of uh, Ephesians 1. 
And here, from verse 3 to, uh, uh, to verse 13, in only one chapter, it gives you your identity, right? Yeah. So it says, Blessed be God, verse 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed you with all, with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where? In Christ. In Christ. Don't forget the last two words. In Christ. In Christ. Because there's some motivational speaker that say, yeah, I can do all things. Uh, I'm strong and this. But then they, they, they don't talk about the last two words. Right. Without Christ, you don't have. You cannot do all things mm -hmm. if it's not for Christ, if you're not in Christ. Right. So it says in Christ. Just as He chose us. So see, you are blessed. Say this. Count with me. One. You are blessed, right? I'm blessed. Blessed. What are you? Blessed. You're blessed. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. So you are what? Chosen. You're chosen. Chosen in before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. So you're what? Holy, holy and without blame. Say it. Say, I am holy, holy and without blame. blame. Have you seen people trying to become holy? You are holy in Christ. Now there is one uh, that we walk out our holiness, but we don't work out for our holiness. So it says that you are holy and without blame. Nobody can blame you. God cannot blame you. You are holy and without blame in Him. That's your identity. And if you get acquainted with this, then sooner or later you are going to walk accordingly. You are saying, no, I am not going to go drink anymore. I am a child of God. So you are chosen. You are blessed. You are chosen. You know, I heard a story of uh, this little girl who was uh, adopted, and um, so he w she, was she was in the school, and the kids made fun of her. Oh, you're adopted. Your parents didn't want you, so you're adopted. Do you know what she said? She said, I was chosen, but your parents had to put up with, with what they got. <laughs> I mean, that's wisdom from a five-year-old, right? Six-year-old. She said that I was chosen, handpicked, but your parents had to put up with what they got. <laughs> And then, I mean, imagine that's the identity again. See, she says that some people came and handpicked me. But your parents had to put up with what they got. So I got handpicked. See, again, same thing. Don't say, oh, my parents didn't want me. I'm, I'm bad. Nobody loves me. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm loved. I'm chosen. I'm blessed. <laughs> so you're blessed. You're chosen. You're holy and without blame. What else are you? Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Christ Jesus to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. Meaning that you are what? You're adopted. So you're blessed. You're chosen. You're holy and without blame. You're adopted. Hallelujah. You're adopted now by Christ. And then it says that uh, uh, He predestined you. Uh, he predestined you. Um, to adoption as sons by Christ Jesus to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. So God didn't say, oh, I have to do something about these guys. The Bible says it was His good pleasure. It was His good pleasure. The good pleasure of His will. Have you, have you seen people, you do something for them, or, or you say thank you, you say, oh, my pleasure. Meaning it was a pleasure that I did for you. So God says it was my pleasure to adopt you, and to choose you, and to accept you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So you are what? You are adopted to the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Have you heard people say, I was created to praise you? That's a wrong song. <laughs> God didn't make you to praise Him. The Bible says God praise in the sense of worship. But the, the Bible says to the praise of the glory of His grace. Meaning that you praise His grace. When people look at your life and they, they see the change in you, they say, wow. So His grace is praised when they see what God has done in your life. They say, see what the Lord has done. Like remember when Balaam came uh, to curse Israel and he saw the, the, the Israelites, he said, wow, look what the Lord has done. Yeah. Who can curse what God has blessed? Right. So when people see your life and they see the change in you, they say, wow, look what the Lord has done. Yes. And then His grace is praised yes. to the praise of the glory of His grace. Right. You know, and there's a homeless couple that I met over a year ago, um, more than a year ago in downtown. And I was reading my Bible in, 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 in Starbucks. And they came and they said, oh, that's a good book. And then we became friends and they, they read their Bible. So he told me his story. He was a thief. And he was actually, um, he went to someone's house to steal something. And uh, so the lady was home. The, the owner was home. So the lady went to the closet and called the police. So the police come and it says, you know, before the guy said all the cars surrounded the house. And they, they told me, if I don't come, come out, they gave me some time to come out. If I don't, they're going to send the canine in. 
And he went in the basement and was hiding in darkness. And sure enough, they sent the canine. And within seconds, the canine found him, the dog. And he crushed his face right here. Oh. So he crushed his nose, like his face, the dog. And they don't let go. You know, when they, when they grab you, these dogs, when they grab someone, they don't let go. So he crushed his face right here. Because I saw the scar on his face, right here. And, and his uh, tear bag was tear. So he said for, for weeks, he was crying without crying. Like tears coming out of his eyes. <laughs> and he's like, tear comes out of his eyes, but he was not crying because his tear bag was tear. Mm -hmm. But then uh, the Lord healed him. They took him to jail. The jail was so full, they let him go. Because the jail, yeah, the jail was so full. And uh, God miraculously let him out of the jail. But then he turned to the Lord and uh, he's saved. Now he has a job. They're out, of, out from the street. They have a car. They have an apartment. They're working now. See, a, ho a druggy, homeless couple who were thieves now they are doing well and he called me just yesterday he said man i'm doing well god is really what has worked in my life and and he said um, that that he's doing well and he's working a, a black african-american family husband and wife and god has changed their life see that is the praise of the glory of his grace when i look at that you say wow look what the lord has done so his grace is what praised hallelujah and where that comes from, the resurrection power of Jesus. Wow. So the same power who raised Jesus from the pit, yeah. rose this couple from the pit. Wow. I mean, right. they were the lowest they could be. Right. They were as low as they could be. But God raised them from the lowest part. And God is glorifying them. Praise and I told them, God has much more for you. Yeah. Just hang in, hang in there. And, and he's, he's studying actually to become a deacon at the church. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Religious, just to stay <laughs> power of the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? Amen? The same power that saved you and me and put you over over your circumstances, your, your defeat, everything coming. If there's a cross, there's a victory coming. Amen? Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So that is the resurrection. That's why what makes Christian different faith is that our Lord about here. He said, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, you are still in your sins. And our faith is futile. My preaching is vain. And your faith is, is vain. So 1 Corinthians 15, I mean, there's so much in, if you read from the book of Acts all the way to the Revelation, yeah. you see so much on resurrection yes. and the power of resurrection. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. So book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and um, again, from uh, verse 1 all the way, it talks about the gospel, and then it comes to verse, um, to verse 12. So uh, from verse 1 through 5, it talks about the gospel is that Christ died according to the scripture. He was buried and he rose from the dead according to the scripture. And in verse 12 says, Now if Christ is preached, that he has no resurrection of the dead. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and, and we are found false witnesses. That was the core of their message. Wow. That's why when in Athens, when he talked in, in Acts chapter 17, when he went to Athens, he's talking to these people, philosophers and these, these Greek philosophers, mm -hmm. and he's talking to them, and then he talks about resurrection, and people began to mock him. But that was the core of his message. Mm -hmm. The Sadducees mm -hmm. laughed. They said, you know, there's no resurrection on the dead, like the you know, Jehovah's Witnesses today. <laughs> right. But then he preached there, wow. and, and then he says, if, if Christ didn't rise from the dead, and Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. That means the cross was a defeat. The cross was mm -hmm. worthless. If, if Christ didn't rise from the dead, means mm -hmm. your faith was futile. The enemy, the death of the body. But then let's go to the book, uh, to the same chapter. And let's go to the verse 50. 50. And then it says... Now this I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nor does corruption inherit cor incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And then it says, for this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruptible, and, he, and this mortal <coughs> has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death Hallelujah. is a swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is, where is your sting? Yeah. Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Oh, death. 
Where is your sting? O oh, oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. See, when you preach the law, you're strengthening sin. Mm -hmm. When you preach the law constantly, you're strengthening sin. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you're saying, because the law points out to your weaknesses and your failures, mm -hmm. but grace points out to your victories and what Christ has done for you. Mm -hmm. So the law provokes sin in you. Mm -hmm. The strength of sin is the law. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh Hades, where is your victory? Wow. You know, when I was a Muslim, they told me uh, when I was a child, I was taught that when you die as a Muslim, they, they bury you, and then when everybody leaves the, the graveyard, then you, you, you rise back to life, you, and then you, you, you wake up. And basically, that's, what, that's the moment you realize you're dead. That's what they told me. And then when you try to get up, your head hits, a, 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 they put a rock above your head when they bury you. So you hit, um, your head hits the rock, and the blood comes out of your nose. Your mom's milk comes out of your mouth. The first time they gave you milk, you know, when you were born. That will come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then a snake will come and ask you questions. Oh. And, and then, yeah, the snake will tell you, you know, what you have done. And I say, man, that's worse than hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, so, and I was so afraid of death. I mean, I'm telling you, I was so afraid yeah. of death. Every time I went to the graveyard to bury someone, I was so afraid that what's going to happen to me, where I'm going to go, where, will, where, I'll, where, where I will be going when I die. And I had no hope. I had no, I was so scared for weeks, I would be afraid and I, and I didn't know. But now I have no fear of death because I know if I live, I live for Christ yeah, and if I die, right. it's gain. Amen? Oh, I'm hard pressed between this and, and hate this. Where is your victory? Yeah. So now, because we have the victory in our Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you, you take your last breath after you have finished your call, the angels are ready to take you to heaven. Amen? Yeah. And you don't go into the grave and then the snake will come and ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Muslims do, but, <laughs> but in Christ we have victory. In Christ we have victory. Amen? So that's why, that's why the, 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 the Christian faith is so different. That we have a resurrection power working in us and for us and through us. And you are not a religious freak. You are a Jesus freak. Amen? You are a child of God. You are born of God. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm so sick and tired of seeing people being defeated and busted and disgusted, always confessing their, their, their defeat and their problems and yeah. always talking about my, how, how they, and instead of talking like a victor, mm -hmm. like talking like Jesus rose from the dead. Amen? Amen. The Amen. same power is available to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you edified? Yes. yes. Or terrified? Yes. <laughs> Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the work of the cross. We thank you for the resurrection from the dead. We thank you, Lord, that we don't believe in an empty uh, faith, but we believe in the resurrection power of Jesus. We believe that you raised the Lord Jesus from the dead, yes. and His resurrection power works in us. Father, we pray that everything we heard tonight, that we may not be forgetful hearers, but the doers of the word, that we may confess our new identity in Christ, that we may always speak as you speak about us, that we may always talk as you talk about us. And I pray, Father God, that as we leave this room, that the enemy may not be able to steal the word from our hearts. As we leave this room, Father God, I pray that the, uh, the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches may not be able to choke the word. And I pray, Father God, that uh, you prepare our heart, you, you nourish and cherish that word that we heard tonight. And you give us more revelation of what it means to be in Christ and what it means to be raised with Him in heavenly places and what it means, Father God, to be a son, to be an heir, and to be a victor. Yes. Thank you, Father God. We give you all the glory. Yes. We thank you for all that you have done for us. We worship you and honor you. We give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say that.